أتوى السلام على إشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When we see the Qur'an, when we read the Qur'an, we see that the primary message of the Qur'an and the primary message of the Prophet and all of the Prophets is to invite people to worship the one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The call to monotheism. This is a central message in the Qur'an. And central theme in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ Every prophet and messenger that we sent, we revealed to them to tell people and call upon people, invite people to worship in the, the one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This message of the prophets and the message of the Quran this is a message that is summarized in one of the shortest surahs in the Quran. And that is Surah Al-Ikhlas or Surah Al-Tawheed or also known as Surah Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, the surah that I began with. This, it might be a short surah, but we should not underestimate the surahs in the Quran by their size. This is one of the most important surahs in the Quran. In fact, it is equivalent to one third of the Quran. One third of the Quran, this surah is equivalent to. Because one third of the Quran is probably only focused on Tawheed and monotheism and inviting people to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a surah that is highly recommended to recite in every single prayer. We should not underestimate the value of a surah just because of its size. Because at the end of the day, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to us. The Qur'an is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith of Rasulullah says, أيعجز, أيعجز, أيعجز أحدكم أن يقرأ ثلث القرآن في ليلة? He tells them, is one of you unable to recite one third of the Qur'an in one night? So they tell him, Ya Rasulullah, وَمَنْ يُطِيقُ ذَلِكَ They tell him, Ya Rasulullah, who can read one third of the Qur'an? One third of the Qur'an? is a lot, you have, to, you have to read a lot, you have to read what is equivalent to, you know, 10 juzos, 10 juzos. We recite in the month of Ramadan, we recite one juzo a day, and that takes probably around half an hour to 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the, the speed of the recitation. So they tell him, Ya Rasulullah, is anyone, are we able to do that? He tells them, yes. اقرأوا قل هو الله أحد. Read Surah Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. Allah will give you the reward of one third of the Quran. Another, another interesting hadith regarding this, and there's other benefits to it. She, this is a hadith narrated by Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. She says, One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi came to visit me while I was ready to sleep. And he tells me, Ya Fatima, la tanami illa waqad amilti arba'ah. O oh, Fatima, don't sleep except when you have done these four things. What are they? Khatamti al-Qur'an. You have completed the whole Qur'an, recited the whole Qur'an. Waja'alti al-anbiya shufa'aiki. And you make the prophets intercede for you. Wa'ardayti al-mu'mineen an nafsiki. And you make sure that all the believers are satisfied with you. Wa'hajajti wa'tamarti. And you go to hajj, get the reward of hajj and the reward of umrah. So Rasulullah said this and he goes and he prays. He says Allahu Akbar and he prays. So she says, I waited, I didn't sleep. I waited until my father finished the prayer. And then I tell him, فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَمَرْتَ بِأَرْبَعَةِ لَا أَقْدِرْ عَلَيْهِنْ فِي هَذَا الْحَالِ فَتَبَسَّمْ He tells her, you asked for four, but I am unable to do them right now. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi smiled. So he says, إِذَا قَرَأْتِي قُلْهُ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ فَكَأَنَّمَا خَتَمْتِ الْقُرْآنِ If you read, if you recite Surah Al-Tawheed, قُلْهُ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ three times, 
It's as if you have read the whole Qur'an. Because one time you read it, it's one third. You get the reward of one third of the Qur'an. You recite it three times, you get the reward of reciting the whole Qur'an. So you could get the reward of reciting the whole Qur'an every day. If you wanted to. You could just recite Surah Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. وَإِذَا صَلَّيْتِ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى الْأَنْبِيَاءِ مِنْ قَبْلِي كُنَّا شُفَعَائِكِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And if you sent salawat upon Rasulullah and upon the prophets and the messengers before me, Rasulullah is saying, then we will intercede for you on the Day of Judgment. So say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa ala jami' al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. You sent salawat upon Rasulullah and all of the prophets, they will become your inter they will intercede for you on the day of judgment and then he says and then he says wa idha istaghfarti lil mu'minin radu kulluhum anki if you do istighfar for the mu'minin say oh allah forgive all of the believers oh allah forgive the mu'minin they will do istighfar for you and they will be satisfied with you and then he tells her if you want the reward of hajj and umrah you say Subhanallah walhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. If you say that, you will receive the reward of Hajj and Umrah. And this is mentioned in Mafatih al Jinan, the famous book of dua, the famous book of uh, supplication by Sheikh Abbas al Qummi. So there is a huge reward in reciting Surah Al Fatiha. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, Inna Rasulullah sallallahu salla ala Sa'd bin Ma'adh. One of the companions of the Prophet, his name is Sa'd ibn Ma'ad, he passed away. Rasulullah did salah. And then he tells them, he tells the Muslims, he tells them the angels came and participated in the funeral procession of Sa'd ibn Ma'ad. And even Jibra'il participated and did dua and asked Allah to forgive Sa'd ibn Ma'ad. So they tell, they tell Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, how is it that the angels participated. Rasulullah asked Jibra'il. And Jibra'il, he tells him the reason why the angels participated in the funeral of Sa'd ibn Ma'ad was because he used to recite Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. Qa'idan wa qa'iman wa raqiban wa mashiyan wa dha'iban wa ja'i'an. He used to recite it all the time. When he's sitting, he recited it. He recites it. When he's walking, he recites it. When he's riding on a horse, he recites it. When he's walking, when he's standing, when he's going, when he's coming back, he is always reciting Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. Therefore, the reward is that the angels participate. Allah sends the angels to participate in his funeral. We have narrations that say you, you recite Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad at least once in out of the five daily prayers. The hadith of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, مَنْ مَضَى بِهِ يَوْمٌ وَاحِدْ فَصَلَّى فِيهِ الْخَمْسِ Salawat, وَلَمْ يَقْرَأْ فِيهَا قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ You prayed the five prayers, but you did not recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ A caller will tell him, يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهُ لَسْتَ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ Oh Abdullah, you are not from those who are praying. Meaning that if you want to, if you want to submit to Allah, if you want to worship, recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Even if it's a shorter surah, recite it. And... Not only recite it during the prayer, but recite it after the prayer. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلَا يَدَعْ أَنْ يَقْرَأْ فِي دُبْرُ الْفَرِيضَةِ بِقُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ After you finish, Allahu Akbar, you do the tasbih at zahra say salawat, recite the dua, and recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Recite the whole surah. And also he says, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ قَرَأَهَا جَمَعَ لَهُ خَيْرُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَغَفَرَ اللَّهِ لَهُ وَلِوَالِدَيْهِ وَمَا وَلَدْ If you read it, Allah will give you the khayr, the good of this dunya and the afterlife and Allah will forgive your parents and your future offsprings. Allah will forgive them. Of course, these all have conditions. It's not that someone, okay, they just recited it and they go to heaven immediately. No, you have to recite it, you have to believe in it. Another hadith says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Increases the sustenance. Recite it when you're entering into your home. Recite it when you are going to work. Tazidu fil rizq wa tatfa'u al-faqr. It increases the wealth and it removes poverty. Now, this surah, Surah Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, Surah Al-Ikhlas, it was revealed in Mecca. It is one of the Meccan surahs. And as we mentioned, the Meccan surahs, they are those that 
focus on the creed, on the ideology, on the belief. And the hadith of, of Imam Sadiq, he says, إن اليهود سألوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله فقالوا أنسب لنا ربك فلبث ثلاثا لا يجيبهم ثم نزلت قل هو الله أحد إلى آخرها. Imam Sadiq عليه السلام, he says, some of the Jews, they came and they asked Rasulullah, tell us about your Lord. You're saying you're a prophet of God, tell us about your Lord. So he stayed for three days until on the third day, this whole surah was revealed. Surah Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. Another hadith, another opinion says that the Christians asked Rasulullah. Another one says the Mushrikeen asked Rasulullah. And if this surah was revealed in Mecca, it would most likely fit that it was the Mushrikeen, it was the idol worshippers, because the Jews and the Christians were not living in Mecca, they were living in Medina, they were living surrounding Medina, especially the Jews. So this is, if we were to believe that it was revealed in Mecca, then we would say that it was the Mushrikeen who asked Rasulullah. But then there's other scholars, they say no, because it could have been several times, Rasulullah every day, he was telling people about God. It's not that, the, okay, this happened once. One day he's talking to this group of people, they ask him, tell us about your Lord. He says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalad wa lam yulad, wa lam yakun lahu kufun ahad. Then he sees the Jews, he sees the Christians, he sees every group of people, and when he is explaining to them Islam and Tawheed, he explains it with, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Now, this surah, just like the ones, the ones after, just like surah number 113 and 114, surah al-Falaq and surah al-Nas, and also al-Kafirun, and there's other surahs in the Quran that begin with qul. Qul means say, O oh Rasulullah, qul, say, Ya Rasulullah. Now, some people, they come and they say, okay, this was probably the angel telling Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, qul, tell the people, and then he would have to begin the Quran with qul, Huwa Allahu Ahad, meaning that the, some say that the surah would probably begin with Huwa Allahu Ahad instead of Qul, because Qul is telling the Prophet to tell the people say. However, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he recited the Qur'an exactly how it was revealed to him. He said everything that Jibra'il came to him and brought down to him and Allah revealed down to his heart. So the verse came down, the revelation came down to the Prophet, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ So he says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ He says, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ He says the قُلْ with it. And this is, um, this is the Qur'an. That means Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he did not play around, he did not take out or add things on his own. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he delivered the Qur'an exactly how it was revealed. Now, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهِ Say, He is Allah, one and indivisible. What does this mean? هُوَ, it is talking about, it is, it is talking about, why would, why would the Qur'an say, هُوَ اللَّهِ Say, He is God. Because the kuffar, they would come and they would ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, we have our idols, our idols are here. We see our idols, we go and we see them. Who is your Lord? Do you see your Lord? So the verse was revealed, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Meaning, if هُوَ, meaning even though you don't see Him, but He is the God and He is the One. This هُوَ, it's إشارة, uh, إشارة للشاهد المدرك, meaning or al-mudrak, meaning the one who, who is, you can't see, but you could feel. So this is um, how the verse begins with huwa, and then Allah, huwa Allah. Allah, see God has many names, the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the name Allah is a name that is the definition of all of the other names. So you come and you take the name Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Jabbar, Al-Quddus, Al-Musawwir, al all of these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you take them, you put them together, what does that mean? That means Allah. That is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's called Ism Alam Lil-Bari, meaning this is the name, the exclusive name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the other qualities, you bring them, you put them together, they're equivalent to Allah. Allah means God. What does God mean? God is the one who's the omnipotent. 
God is the omniscient. God is the omnipresent. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful. He's the most knowledgeable. He's always there. He's, he, is, he does not come into existence. He does not leave existence like everyone else. See, every single one of us, we, when we come to existence, we leave existence. There's a time, there's a beginning, there's an end. Our power is limited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not. And Allah means God. That's what mean Allah literally means God. So when people say the Muslims they worship Allah, yes, we worship Allah because Allah means God. So the Christians and the Jews, and for example, there's Christian Arabs, they also worship Allah because Allah means God. So when we say God, it means that God is the one who's not in need of anyone, not in need of anything. So it doesn't make sense to say God was born. Because God is the one who has always been present. How can God be born? Or God, um, God died on the cross, for example. Can you say God died? God doesn't die. God is the one who gives life. How can you come and say God died? Or God has hands and legs and a body and face. You can't say that. Why? Because that means you are limiting God. And God is the one who is unlimited by definition. Can you come and limit God? No. You can't limit God. But when you give hands and legs and face and a body, that means you are limiting and containing. In a hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, Allah ma'nahu al-ma'bud alladhi ya'lah fihi al-khalq. God, by definition, it means the, the one who's worshipped and other people take as a Lord. وَيُؤَلَّهْ إِلَيْهِ And other people worship. Wallah huwa al-mastur. عن درك الأبصار المحجوب عن الأوهام والخطرات. Allah subhanahu wa taala has protected. Our minds can't even comprehend God. Our eyes can't see. Our senses can't be there because our senses are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And if your sense can see God, then that means God is contained. Just like you look at the sun. How great is the sun? But you can see it with your eyes. Then that that means it has a peri perimeter. That means it's limited. But Allah is unlimited. Can your eye see something that is unlimited? No. Can you look at the a sky and see as far possible? Even though the sky is limited, but our eyes can't see it. So imagine trying to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد Say, God, He is God, the One. What does Ahad mean? Ahad is different from Wahad. In Arabic, when you want to say one, you say Wahad. Ahad, it means the exclusive one, meaning the one. There's no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you say He is one, then that means there could be two, there could be three. He is one of many. So Ahad is different from Wahad. And this is why the Quran, it's very... You know, it's very exact, it's very precise. And this is why the Qur'an is a miracle. Because the Qur'an, the wording that it uses are very precise. Very clear and very precise. And not sending a wrong message. This is why, if, for example, they ask you, did anyone come to you? You say, لَمْ يَأْتِنِي أَحَد No one came. No one came to visit me. لَمْ يَأْتِنِي أَحَد But if you were to say, لَمْ يَأْتِنِي واحد, one person did not come to me. That means two people could have came, or three, or four, or twenty people could have came. You say it's like saying one person did not come, but the other one lam yatni ahad means no one came, not a single person came. So there's a difference between ahad and wahad. And in a hadith narrated by Sheikh al Saduq, he says that in the battle of Jamal, in the battle of the camel. A man, an Arabi, an Arab man came to Amir al muminin and he tells him, أَتَقُولْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ واحد? You say God is one? So some people, they got upset. They tell him, what are you doing? You're asking Imam Ali and he's in the middle of a battle right now? Don't you see that his mind is, you know, he's busy right now? So they tell him, don't you see that Amir al muminin is busy? Amir al muminin said, leave them. He says, دَعُوهُ فَإِنَّ الَّذِي يُرِيدُهُ الْأَعْرَابِ هُوَ الَّذِي نُرِيدُهُ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ Leave him. He's asking a question. He's asking about Tawheed, 
about monotheism and what he what the, this man is seeking is what we are seeking from the people we are fighting them over tawhid amir al-mu'minin says we are fighting the people of jamal over tawhid even though they were believers they were muslim but yes it goes back to tawhid because they were refusing to accept the imam of their time and when you don't accept the imam of your time when you don't accept the wilayah of amir al-mu'minin that means your tawhid is going to be in question this is why a lot of people today, they come, they're Muslims, they're believers, but they come and they say, God has a body, God has hands, God has a face, God has this and that. And that makes it very similar to what the Christians say about God. God has a body, God has this and that. So he tells him, he tells the Arabi, in the middle of the battle, Amir al-Mu'mineen, his mind is there and he's teaching the person. He tells him, Ya Arabi, in al qawl fi anna Allah wahid ala arba'ati aqsam. To say God is one, this could be divided into four. Two of them are accepted and two of them are not accepted. Those two, the two ways to understand God is one that are not accepted is to say when, when someone says واحد يقصد به باب الأعداد فهذا ما لا يجوز لأن ما لا ثانية له لا يدخل في باب الأعداد to say God is one out of many. That means, for example, uh, you say, yeah, I have one, for example, one outfit, one brown outfit, but I have a blue one and I have another color and I have another color. So Allah does not have a second. So you can't come and say God is one of many. That's not what, when we say God is one, that's not what we mean. Second, to all, because, and then Amir al-Mu'mineen says, أَمَا تَرَى أَنَّهُ كَفَرَ مَنْ قَالْ أَنَّهُ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَ Don't you see that it is blasphemy to those who say God is one out of three. He is one out of three. Because that's kufr. That means you're adding two other partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. God and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So, um, so the second that is also not allowed, he says, he is one of the people. So the first is one out of the numbers, meaning he is one rather than two or three. The second one is one of the people, meaning one of the people that came here was from this country, another one was from that country, another one was from that country. These are not, you cannot say that with regards to God. As for the third and the fourth, which are allowed, is to say, هُوَ وَاحِدْ لَيْسَ لَهُ فِي الْأَشْيَاءِ شَبْهٌ كَذَلِكَ رَبُّنَا Meaning he is one of a kind. There's no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then that is allowed. Nothing resembles Allah. He's not one out of many. He is one that no one and nothing resembles him. And the Fourth, that is also allowed to say he is one who is not divided in anything. Today, anything that you take, even a cell, you could divide it. Even an atom, it could be divided. Protons and neutrons and electrons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one that cannot be divided. Allah doesn't have parts. Allah doesn't have hands, legs. Allah cannot be divided. Everything can be divided, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not divided. So, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ and then we say Allahu Samad. What does Allahu Samad? In the English translation, it says Allah, the sustainer needed by all, or the master needed by all, where others turn to Him. Yasmadu ilayhi al jamia. Everyone turns to Allah, but He does not turn to anyone. He's not in need of anyone. In a hadith, a group of people they wrote a letter to Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, the people of Basra. They ask him, What does Samad mean? So he writes to them. فَكَتَبَ إِلَيْهِمْ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَمَّا بَعْدْ فَلَا تَخُوضُوا فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا فِيهِ وَلَا تَتَكَلَّمُوا فِيهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ Don't go and argue and debate because they were debating about the meaning of the verse. Don't go and debate when you have no knowledge. Meaning resort to those who have knowledge. And then he says, فَقَدْ سَمِعْتُ جَدِّي رَسُولَ اللَّهِ يَقُولْ مَنْ قَالَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ I heard my grandfather say, the one who speaks of the Qur'an without knowledge, gives their own opinion, then this person, their place in the hellfire is reserved for them. And then he tells them, Allahu Ahad, he gives the, the definition of Allahu Samad, he says, Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, then he says, what does Allahu Samad mean? 
he says Allah Samad means Lam Yalid Walam Yulad Walam Yakun Lahu Kufwanahat. So the Quran gives the definition of what Samad means. Allah Samad, he is the one who is Lam Yalid Walam Yulad Walam Yakun Lahu Kufwan Ahad. He has never had offspring or he was never born and there is none comparable to him. This is what Allah Allah Samad means. This is what it means. It means that he is the master. He is the creator. He is needed by all. Others turn to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. So what does lam yalid, wa lam yulad mean? He has never had offspring, nor was he born. Sometimes people, they ask, okay, everything has a beginning. I have, I came from my parents, my parents from their parents, from their parents. There has to have been a time where the first one, came into existence. You can't just keep infinitely going back. However, so people ask, okay, then who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When did Allah begin? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a beginning or an end. Allah was always around. Because Allah is the one who created time. To say, where is God or when did God come to existence? We are using time, which is a concept created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to measure it against God. God created time. You can't come and ask a question, something that God is created by. That, that, something that God created and use that to say, you know, God is subject to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not subject to His own laws and subject to His own creation. So Allah does not have offspring and He was not born. And this is what makes the Muslims different from the Christians and some of the Jews who said Uzair ibn Allah. The Quran says, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودِ Uzair ibn Allah وَقَالَتُ النَّصَارَى الْمَسِيحُ ibn Allah. The Christians said Messiah is the son of God and the Jews said Uzair is the son of God. But Allah says, لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ No, God is not born and he does, he does not have offspring, He doesn't have children. Why would God have children? We have children because we're in need of children. We have children because we have that desire to have a continuation of our legacy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of children. And Allah was not born. Allah does not have parents like you and I. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدٍ And there is no one comparable to Allah. There is no equal counterpart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't come and say, okay God and you know the, the idol worshippers during the time of the early stages of Islam when Rasulullah was speaking to them, they would say, okay, you want us to believe in God? We'll believe in God. You also believe in our idols, Allah, wal Uzza. We'll add, we'll add your God to one of our idols. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, la ilaha illallah. There's no God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Amir al muminin in one of his sermons in Nahj al-Balagha, he says, لَمْ يَلِدْ فَيَكُونْ مَوْلُودًا وَلَمْ يُولَدْ فَيَصِيرْ مَحْدُودًا He is not born to be born, to have a birthday and to have a time that God is born. And he, and he, is not, and he does not have offspring to be limited. وَلَا كُفْءَ لَهُ فَيَكُونْ فَيُكَافِئُهُ وَلَا نَظِيرْ فَيُسَاوِي He doesn't have any counterpart who is at the same level as God. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدٍ There is no one that resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my dear brothers and sisters, this surah is very important. We have to recite the surah and the more we recite it, the more we increase our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we increase our ma'rifa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran in one argument, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَفَسَدَتَا فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَرْشِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ If there was more than one God, then you see there would be chaos. Imagine there were, there, there's one car company, there's one car, but you have two different designs. Two different engineers. One is thinking this way and one is thinking another way. And they're both coming and they're, they're, they're trying to both have their own calculation. You see it's going to fall apart. You have to have one design. When we look at the creation, when we look at the world, we see there's one design. The design is similar to one another. 
the uh, the humans they're all they all have the same type of body animals and even all of creation they all go back you could tell that there's one type of design one designer and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the proof that there is only one God my dear brothers and sisters we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our faith and make us from those who have strong tawheed and strong belief and faith and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala